And welcome to, this is, I think, episode 26 of the uh, Iceman Coach Mode Dynasty Series uh, as we follow Casey Clawson's college coaching career. And uh, he's still offensive coordinator. We are finishing the first season here with Coastal Carolina. And uh, to start this episode, uh, this is the po- the uh, <clears throat> end of season episode, I guess you call it, the wrap up for 2020. And we'll look uh, at the North Texas Bowl game. Uh, obviously, it did not go well for us in the New Orleans Bowl. North Texas kind of ran us off the field. Uh, it's <laughs> things started promisingly. Right? As I, I'll do a recap for those of you who didn't watch uh, the game footage. But uh, we we started uh, the game with a uh, a decent drive, got a 51 yard field goal, took a three nothing lead. But North Texas would answer with a touchdown, and then. They um, recovered a fumble in the end zone to go up 14-3. to And then they returned a punt 49 yards. And so we're down 21-3. to And uh, But the ensuing kickoff, Reese White took it back to cut it back to 21-10, give us some hope. But then before the quarter ended, uh, they threw a 55-yard touchdown pass that made it 28-10. Uh, second and third quarters weren't quite as bad. We had uh, Biscardi kicked a couple field goals to pull us within 28-16. But then uh, North Texas would, of course, answer with a touchdown. And then they would score another touchdown in the fourth quarter, which would make it 42-16. to And so we really, from there, we were just looking for consolation. Um, we did put, a, <clears throat> put together you know, a nice methodical drive to get a touchdown before the game ended. But... It was not a good performance, and the team has got to get better. Um, you can't lose 42-23 to 23 to North Texas, right? It's one thing if you lose like that to Alabama or, you know, Georgia or somebody, but <clears throat> Ohio State, but to get ran out the field like that by North Texas, that shows there's a lot of work to be done, and so that's what we'll be looking to do this offseason. Uh, real quick look at the stats. Um the numbers, you know, don't show as bad of a deficit. You know, it doesn't look like a 20-point loss statistically. Uh, they only outgained us by 40 yards. Uh, their quarterback only threw for 50%, but he hit some big plays, and that was the difference. You can see that because uh, even though they had 40 more yards, we had nine more first downs, which all that really means is that they were hitting big plays, and we weren't. And uh, that shows in the individual stats. We'll look at those in a second. Turnovers also. They didn't turn the ball over. We turned it over twice. And that's, you know, a lot of games, that's going to be the difference. Um, If you look at our stats, Carpenter, you can see uh, he completed 24 passes, but only got 191 yards out of that. Um, And when you throw 42 and only get less than 200, that probably means you didn't have a very good day, especially with, um, you know, receivers weren't making big plays. Uh, in the rushing game, we actually had a decent running game. Uh, Marable carried 16 times for over 100 yards, and you guys know how rare it is for us to hit that. But uh, he did average six yards a carry. Um, so, he, you know, the running game wasn't the problem. You look at our receivers, I mean, we spread the ball around, but just nobody made any big plays. Um, the longest play you see there is you had one play of 27 yards. <clears throat> And while that's a good play, that's, you know, that's, if that's your longest pass play, you know, you, you better, you better not drop the ball, which the team did six times. So we, um, yeah, the passing game just was meh. It was just so meh all day in North Texas to their credit, you know, kind of shut us down. Um, and then of course blocking, give up sacks, but that, you know, a lot of times as you've, if you've watched the series, you've seen Bryce Carpenter, he just, he takes off, he panics sometimes almost immediately and tries to run and has nowhere to go and he gets sacked. And so, um, yeah, not a great performance and, you know, North Texas deserved to win and we've got to get better, um, all over the field. <clears throat> so with that said, let's kind of look at the top stories real quick. Uh, Florida did win the national championship. We'll look at the college football playoff in a moment. It talks about Trask and his big day uh, as they defeated Arizona State. Then you've got uh, another story about that. Um, they won 38-35. We'll see that in a moment, but they won by three in the uh, playoff final. Texas uh, wins the Big 12. That's a you know, big story, apparently. You'll see another top story about Texas. Uh, Jalen Waddell, 
won the best returner award. Uh, I guess they felt like that was a top story. Uh, again, another story about Texas finishing number two. Uh, and then uh, again, uh, it's a story about LSU with an overtime win. That might have been probably was the best game of the bowl season. Uh, they uh, went to overtime with Penn State and got a 35-32 win, I believe. Uh, and then this is, um, it says this was the, the national championship, but uh, this was Florida beat Oklahoma in the semifinal, 40-7. to So there's a little, when you've used a college football playoff mod, uh, I think it messes with some of the um, some of the logic, uh, and that's true of the top stories as well, probably. Uh, and then a story about Texas beating Ole Miss in the Sugar Bowl. But now let's go and look at. Um, we'll just go down to bowl results and look at it that way. So you can see the New Mexico Bowl. Notre Dame beats uh, FIU thirty-eight to seven. The famous Idaho Potato Bowl sees Oregon State beat Colorado State thirty-four twenty-five. Uh, the New Era Pinstripe Bowl, Virginia Tech over Indiana, 28-14. Duke beat uh, our fellow Sunbelt brethren, uh, Appalachian State, 24-21. In the Las Vegas Bowl, it was Stanford, 34-16 over Wyoming. And then there's our, our result, um, 42-23 loss to North Texas. UAB over Nevada in the Hawaii Bowl, 42-17. BYU wins the Quick Lane Bowl over Western Michigan, 30-24. to Then it was uh, Central Florida over Boise State, 35-17 in the Military Bowl. Florida State finishes off a decent season as they're trying to rebuild, uh, beating Minnesota, 37-31. Louisville over Washington in the Holiday Bowl. The Huskies, after one point being ranked in the top five, finish the season on the slide, and uh, Louisville gets the win there. In the Cheez-It Bowl, it was Boston College 30-24 to over Texas Tech. USC beats Missouri 45-21 to in the Independence Bowl. In the Academy Sports Texas Bowl, Tennessee beats Kansas State 27-24. In the Armed Forces Bowl, Cincinnati overcomes TCU 24-13. Kentucky with a win in the Red Box Bowl over Washington State 35-20. to <clears throat> In Miami... In a battle of two teams who uh, st- had struggled at the end, uh, Miami wins 37-24. to And then uh, Oklahoma State crushes Rutgers 42-3 to in the Cactus Bowl. In the Sun Bowl, Virginia over UCLA 37-21. In the Music City Bowl, Illinois beat South Carolina 21-10. to And then in the Liberty Bowl, Alabama slipped all the way down to the Liberty Bowl with a 45-31 win over Baylor. They do finish ranked number 11, but uh, that's that's got to be a disappointing bowl to end up in if you're Alabama. So in one of the college football semifinals, you had uh, Arizona State beat North Carolina in the Peach Bowl. In the first responder bowl, Memphis beats Western Kentucky 34-13 as the Tigers finish uh, with 10 wins and ranked number 23. And there's the uh, LSU win over Penn State. Georgia in the Citrus Bowl over Wisconsin, 34-20. to And uh, this is another one of the glitches from the uh, using the playoff mod. Um, the score at the top shows Michigan winning, but uh, you can see in the, in the bottom, 20-6. Uh, to or- And 20-6 to was the final. Oregon beat Michigan 20-6. to uh, I think the explanation here, uh, this is a full disclosure. When you do the college football playoff mod, um, you do have to change some of the bowl matchups to make everything work out and the rose bowl was one that i changed and when you do when you change when you modify a bowl matchup you then have to sim and watch uh that matchup if you don't and you advance i think it causes some issues and that's what happened here i went through and forgot to to uh, sim this game like watch sim watch whatever you want to call it I, I, I use the super sim. I don't actually watch it, but you have to go into the game and super sim it. And I didn't do that with this one and I, by mistake, and I advanced, and so I had to go back. And I think that kind of fudged with the logic a little bit. Um, that may be true. It may have happened regardless. But in any case, Oregon won the game 20 to 6. And this, the, the only thing that, the only issue is the score up top, but that doesn't have any effect on rankings or any of that so um 
So, Oregon with the win. <laughs> in the Gator Bowl, Auburn beat Pittsburgh 21-14. Clemson crushed Texas A&M in the Fiesta Bowl 38-14. Texas uh, gets by Ole Miss 24-17 in the Sugar Bowl. And Nebraska beats West Virginia in the Cotton Bowl 35-21. And there's the other college football playoff semifinal as Florida beat Oklahoma 40-7. Uh, in the Birmingham Bowl, Mississippi State falls to Tulsa 24-21. And then Toledo beats our other Sunbelt uh, Bowl-bound brethren, the <laughs> Georgia Southern. Uh, I think they're the Falcons. Uh, and Toledo wins 42-21. Um, so that meant the Sunbelt was winless in the bowl season this year. Uh, and the college football national championship game, it was... Florida beating Arizona State 38-35. You see up there at the top, though, it has that 40-7 to score. Again, that is a glitch uh, that's to do with the playoff mod. But uh, Florida wins the national championship. So good for the Gators. We'll look uh, real quick at the top 25. Uh, Florida, of course, number one. Texas, two. Clemson, three. North Carolina, four. Arizona State, five. LSU 6, Oklahoma 7, Georgia 8, Oregon 9, Auburn 10, Alabama 11, Virginia Tech 12, Ole Miss 13, Boston College 14, Nebraska 15, Michigan 16, Central Florida finished 17th, Texas A&M 18th, Ohio State 19, Wisconsin number 20, 21 was Washington, Miami finished ranked 22nd with a 10-win season, Memphis 23rd, Kentucky finished ranked number 24, and Florida State number 25, and that is the coaches' top 25. We won't worry about the media. Um, what did I have next? Uh, next, we'll look at the awards. Um, first, we'll, we'll look at the superlatives. Uh, Jerry on Ely, we know he won the Heisman Trophy. He also wins the Maxwell Award and the Walter Camp Award. A great season for the sophomore. He's got at least one more year, so it'll be interesting to see what he does next year. Uh, another junior, Merlin Robertson from Arizona State, wins the Bednarik Award, and then he also wins the Nagurski. Uh, the O'Brien Award was won by Trevor Lawrence from Clemson. He had a great season, over 3,000 yards, 37 total touchdowns. And the Walker Award also went to Jerion Ely. Uh, Devin Price, the true freshman receiver from Texas A&M, won the Boletnikoff Award. And the Mackey Award goes to Kyle Pitts, the tight end from Florida. Uh, Creed Humphrey wins the Outland Trophy and the Remington Award. And it was the uh, Lombardi Award going to Tyreek Smith from Ohio State. The Best Linebacker, or the Butkus Award, goes to Baron Browning from Ohio State. Uh, the Jim Thorpe Award goes to Kair Elam from Florida, the sophomore there. Um, Peyton Henry, the junior kicker from Washington, wins the Lou Groza Award. The Ray Guy Award goes to Michael Turk from Arizona State. And, of course, the best returner goes to Jalen Waddell from Alabama. And it's not listed, but the um, coach of the year was Mac Brown from North Carolina. And uh, the way I, just, I had to find this out myself, um, there is a way to see who wins the coach of the year award it takes a little effort <laughs> i have a um so what you have to do first of all you go to coach info all right and if you scroll all the way over here the uh this column right here coach of the year awards what you have to do is that i've got a little spreadsheet it doesn't at the beginning there's not like a lot all right so it's not as hard as it sounds um but you, you, I, and I've got a spreadsheet with with the, each coach that has won the award and how many they've won, and so like Mac Brown had zero. So then after the season, I come and so sort it by the coach of the year awards again, and I see Mac Brown here. Okay, he's got one. That means he won it this year. And there actually is an award for the top assistant coach as well. And uh, Steve Sarkeesian was the winner of that for this season. Um, just a little FYI for those of you who may not know. Probably most of you do if you're actually watching this. But there you go. Um, we'll kind of wrap this up. We'll look at recruiting as obviously we've got a lot. Of, we've got to make this roster better as um, we are. You know, we are just not performing well on the field, and so that's got to improve. And so um, I think we saw most. I don't know where, where you know. Where, I don't remember where we last left off as far as who who signed. But I did get Devin Thomas. He was a three-star receiver that I was kind of late in the game getting to. He's a 68 overall, so he was kind of a nice get. 
I did get Jason Tyler. I think I do remember that commitment talking about that. So he's the quarterback of the future. He may be the quarterback of the immediate future. We'll see. I just as kind of a preview uh, as I go into next season, uh, he will probably see some time. Uh, if he, if I don't, if I end up going with um, Carpenter again or one of the other options. Uh, Tyler is going to get in. I want to compare him because he is an actual pocket passer and my other three quarterbacks are scramblers. So I at least want to compare uh, Tyler to those other guys on the field and see how well he does. And it could be that he wins the job. Um, so anyway, uh, we also got Carlos Malone, this little scat back who I feel is going to fit us better going forward. And Curtis Smith was another big um a big get for us. He's literally big. He is six seven. Uh, he's a guy that I'll also probably try and play and get on the field some, no matter what, just because I want to see a six seven receiver out there. Um, looking at the guys, I'm still recruiting heading into the off season. I've got this receiving tight end who I was kind of late getting in on, uh, Preston Bosley, uh, Phil Fort Thomas, the tackle uh, lead for him, but. I only the only reason I'm ahead is because he was visiting the last week of the season, which allowed me to shoot ahead of the other teams. I actually fully expect them <laughs> to come back and get him going into the off season, and I, I have to be strategic, right? I have to think about is it worth putting points towards him in the off season because you only get that one chance. And if I put points towards him and lose him, then those are wasted. Um, so I've got to think about that. Uh, same same thing with Ma- Marvin Martinez, the other tackle. He's another guy who I only lead for him over Oregon because I hosted him the last week of the season. Um, Brandon Ball is another guy, which he'll probably be tough to get. Unfortunately, it's all three of the offensive linemen. Um but because Washington's in on him, and I think that they were gaining. Yeah, they're gaining. So if I really want Brandon Ball, I'm probably going to have to devote a lot to him. Uh, meanwhile, Dustin White and Leroy Griffin, um, I may have gotten in too late to be able to hit the number that you need uh, to get them signed. I would like to get Leroy Griffin, uh, especially because he's a uh, you know he's a good cornerback, and I feel like. That's kind of where we have more need, but we'll see. Um, we'll look at that in the next episode. I'm, I'm the next episode is going to kind of be an off season episode where we go through recruiting, and you guys will, you know, see all of that. Um, but we'll end with a look at the top classes. I am 38th. That's uh, pretty high for Coastal Carolina. Um, the reality is, though, that I plan on I figure that I'll slide down this list um, when the after the off season recruiting because you look at these teams right below us. And they're going to sign more guys, right? They're going to—they're not just going to end up with eleven play. Like Northwestern, Missouri, Washington, probably those three, and Stanford, Ole Miss, at least will all pass me. <laughs> I might end up down around fifty, which would be fine because I still think that that'll get, make me number one in the Sun Belt, and that was our big goal—is to be the top, have the top class in the Sun Belt Conference. Um, as you can see, the Sunbelt Conference apparently is not recruiting very well at the moment. Troy is the next highest team, and they're 77th. So we feel pretty good about where we are. Uh, even if even if nobody signed, uh, I think the class that we have is a pretty good one, and it'll set us up to sort of you know build for the future. So I'm going to go ahead and end this episode. Make sure you tune in the next one for the off-season uh, episode for 2021. Uh, this is Vol Force One, and we will see you next time.